Electricity and Energy Minister Dr. Kosien Ramokoba has emphasized the importance of implementing an electricity pricing plan. Ramokoba says consultations are ongoing between Power Utility ESCOM and the country's municipalities to ensure sustainability. But let's now unpack this with Energy Secretariat Head at the South African National Energy Development Institute, Professor Samson Mampweli. Uh, Prof, good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I actually want to start with this before we get into this issue of the pricing plan. Um, where we are right now with this reprieve um, of load shedding, do you still call it that? Uh, certainly when we've seen a uh, load reduction in some parts of uh, the country and in some communities. Um, and what do you make of four months of load shedding? Can we, so of no load shedding, I need to clarify that. Can we sustain this? Yeah, good, good morning to you, Naledi, and the viewers. Yeah, um, it's been a, a, good, a good four months of no load shedding. Uh, and uh, the data that we have from ESCOM shows that uh, they, it's basically because the system is, is performing very well. Um, the, 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 the number of breakdowns have gone down. The energy availability factor has gone up uh, above. It's always above 60 percent, above uh, sometimes it's hitting 70 percent. We obviously have other factors such as your a small scale embedded generation coming on board. We've got about six gigawatts of rooftop solar PV uh, that has been installed by households and businesses. That has that continue to help even during winter uh, when when the number of uh, sun hours have, have, have reduced. Um, I'm very much optimistic uh, that uh, the the situation may continue like this. Uh, the last time I checked, we had uh, more than 30 gigawatts available uh, and and the demand has, has has been quite low especially during the day when the sun is shining and then escom is able to to use the additional capacity uh to 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 to, to build uh, reserves through pump storage and other things so i'm very much optimistic that we, we we may be able to continue to sustain this until we we start the beginning of uh, of summer and, and if we go through the beginning of summer without load shedding, uh, we might uh, as well see the, the, land of, the end of load shedding going forward. Yeah, what we did see last year, though, is that uh, even as we started to come out of the cold uh, months um, towards the end of the year, a maintenance um, uh, bout of load shedding also expected. I mean, is that something that we could see possibly happening in the near future? Yeah, so the, the ESCO maintenance program will start to, to, to ramp up um, immediately after we have, we've gone into the summer months because the first wait for, for the summer months, when we start to have rains and, and, and things like that, um, so, so that they can then see how the, the system gets gets affected, the, the, the energy system, they get, get affected. And then from there, they can then ramp up uh, maintenance going forward. That's why I'm saying uh, once we go through the very the first few months of summer, uh, and and then we might see the the end of of load shedding going forward. And there are other other uh, systems that that we 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 know will come on board uh, as we as we edge towards the, the the beginning of summer. That will also help in terms of balancing the supply and demand going forward. So, I mean, this is a difficult thing to ask, but if we look at the supply and demand that we have, and certainly what we heard from the electricity minister, and you've touched on this as well, around 70% uh, um, energy availability factor, really interesting numbers. Uh, you talk about we could see the end of load shedding. I want to clarify that that's what you said, because that's what people essentially want to hear, that could we be seeing the tail end of years of load shedding in South Africa, and by when? Because I certainly remember the deputy president of the country speaking at the University of Johannesburg saying, well, we could see the end of load shedding towards the end of 2023. Is that something that's possible? Uh, it is very much possible that uh, we, we might see the end of load shedding by, uh, you know, September, October. Um, yeah, the beginning of uh, October, somewhere there. Uh, depending on the on the various factors that I have uh, uh, described, right? Um, when when we start to to have rain and 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 when we start to have high temperatures, when people start to use uh, air conditioners uh, to cool down their their, their 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 living spaces and things like that, uh, all that will aggregate to a to removal of certain uh, megawatts or. 
uh, aggregate to uh, some kind of a higher demand mm. uh, and and if we if we go through that kind of a higher demand that we are expecting when we when we hit uh, uh, the summer months um, over and ab- about o- o- over that kind of a period we might uh, see the end of of load shedding so i i'm, I'm very much confident that uh, by by november december government should be declaring the end of load shedding in south africa okay let's talk about our pockets here because certainly in Gauteng, the a big discussion has been around um that 200 rand surcharge for prepaid electricity users um the energy and electricity minister yesterday and i quote saying we really do not want to engage uh, publicly on the merit of whether the 200 rand is needed or not what we do need though is to find a more enduring and robust solution to the tariff problem but what the minister then went on to do was to say that nurses duty is to protect the consumer from rising electricity costs i mean Whose responsibility is it to protect the consumer when we have seen nurses certainly grant um, ESCOM a few tariff hikes? Yeah, so NERSA is, is charged with the responsibility to, 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 to regulate the electricity prices and ultimately to protect the consumers. And um, mostly the, the, the most vulnerable groups, uh, which is the, 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 poor, the poorest of the poor. Um, the, the issue around the 200 rands and, and all that, I agree with the minister that uh, th- there is a need for us to to go and look into the, the the tariffs because there are various factors that affect the tariffs. Uh, one of them is the fact that in the past uh, our our tariffs were not cost reflective, which basically means that uh, the 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 consumers were not paying for for everything that they use. Uh, in most cases, you would pay for the kilowatt hours that you use, which is basically the, the units that you see on your sleep when you buy electricity. Um, but you won't necessarily pay for the lines that are that are coming to your house, for the for the meter that is in your house, and mm. and, and and for them to be maintained, for the for the transformers that are uh, coming uh, connecting to your house, so that you you continue to have electricity. That also contributed partly to the challenges of security of supply because when the systems are not properly maintained, you start to have uh, breakdowns that will lead to. Uh, things such as what what we are seeing now uh, in in various mo- metros yeah. where you you have uh, load reduction, for instance. Yeah, but the the, so the issue of protecting the consumer from high prices certainly not just happening at at national level, right? It needing to be a, a discussion even uh, when we get to the metros, and you've touched on that. We've seen just last month Eskom getting that court to judgment against the city of Johannesburg as well as city power for a payment of one billion rand debt. So how do we deal with the spiraling debt that municipalities find themselves in where ESCOM is concerned and how that impacts on the consumer? So the, the debt uh, is, is something that needs to be dealt with uh, uh, by government, uh, in my view. Um, there was uh, there were proposals at some point. I remember shouting at some point, clearing those debts. And, and and then working with uh, with ESCOM, ESCOM had given them uh, a re- relief to say you can pay half of of your debt, and then the the remainder of the debt uh, the, the 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 provincial government was clearing, and then uh, under the conditions that the municipalities will then take over from there and and then continue to pay for the electricity. I think that there's a need for us to look at some such kind of models and look at whether they work best or not. Yep. The other thing is, is the, the other aspect is that uh, a government uh, is responsible for municipalities. My view is that municipalities that are not servicing their debts must be put under administration and, uh, and, 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 and must be properly run by the administrators until such time that they, 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 their debts have been cleared because that obviously impacts on the price of the electricity and impact, it impacts on the poorest of the poor. Yeah, a big call that I am sure um, the cocktail minister would have something to say about. But uh, we really do appreciate your time, Prof. Thank you so much for speaking to us, energy analyst there.